Well, I thought I'd throw my two cents in here on this uh, Tundra issue that's going on with the recall of the engines. <clears throat> number of different problems here, and I, I feel like since mine were the first videos back in the fall of 2021, almost three years ago, telling you about problems on the specs of this truck all the way around, you knew this was a compromised vehicle, I thought I'd tell you what I think about what's going on right now. So, first of all, I think the Tundra has... This, the current generation Tundra, the third generation, 2022 to 2024, still has design flaws. Toyota has uh, finally issued the recall. We won't rehash that. Um, if you're watching this, you probably know what it is. Roughly 100,000 vehicles through uh, the first quarter of 2023, roughly. They're probably going to stage that in to put a recall on the 2023s and the 2024s, but it's difficult to handle them all at the same time. They've announced it as a safety recall, which is concerning. Um, and the question becomes, what are they going to do about it? Well, also, the other question, I think, is what's really going on? Uh, Toyota's talking about debris in the machining or cleaning process, and that's kind of been the story and speculation for quite some time. I think that's problematic um, from a standpoint of all these failures are the same, right? We're not getting, if it's debris, we're, we're getting failures at random points uh, wherever the oil touches, right? But that's not the case. It always seems to be the main bearing is the problem. Being that it's the main bearing, I think it's a design flaw. Now, something else I've seen put out there is uh, low speed pre ignition failure. I think that's a possibility too, but I think it's if that were the case, I think it would be more likely uh, the rod bearing that we would be seeing fail, right? Not the main bearing. It, we all know it's oil starved, right? And so the pre ignition failure, why? That kind of seems to fit in because this is occurring at relatively low speeds from most of the things I've seen out on Facebook and the forums of when people are having this occur. They don't seem to be doing anything, you know, they weren't really challenging the truck at that point in time. They weren't necessarily under heavy load. Um, it also, you know, it's a known problem with uh, turbo engines uh, in direct injection vehicles, right, in, in gasoline direct injects. And so you're, you're, you know, there's a number of that that would add up to pre-ignition failure. The only problem is the location, which is the main bearing, not the rod bearing. And since it's consistent in that same spot, I think this has got to be design flaw. Now, I know Toyota's not saying design flaw at this point in time, and of course they're not going to, but I think it's got to be design flaw. Otherwise, why would it consistently be in that same area, right? There have been some other things that have gone on too, but that main bearing seems to be pretty constant for people. And so I gotta believe that's design flaw. So, well, main bearing's pretty straightforward. It's oil starvation. Now, is the oil starvation coming from debris that wasn't properly clean, clogging it up? Eh, again, I don't necessarily believe that because I think it'd be random other locations. I think, you know, what that design flaw is exactly would be speculative. Um, if I had to guess, again, because these are occurring at low speed, I think what's happening is as those turbos boost up when somebody gives acceleration, I think that what's happening is you're creating a force in an engine that's maybe got a little bit too much play in it, or maybe it's not fully warmed up. And what's happening is you're uh, uh, creating uh, a bearing that's not fitting very well. It's beginning to rub as it begins to rub if you, know, you get into this thing that looks like oil starvation or technically kind of is oil starvation wears out the bearing pretty quickly then so what do i think you know we know what toyota's done they've issued a recall they're going to make the announcement in july um, it's uh, from the 2022 model through 2023s like i said roughly the first quarter of 2023 it also you know doesn't make sense that it's machining because they've included uh, the uh, the Lexus LX600 in this as well. Um, and since they've included the Lexus LX600 in this as well, that's built over in Japan. It doesn't make sense that that process is crossing continents, right? It's If it were a cleaning process or something in the methodology, you would think that would be unique to one factory, not across multiple factories. So all these things, you know, are adding up to, this is a design flaw. and. <clears throat> now, whether you know whether that's accurate or not, I can't say because look, I'm not an engineer. I've got some base knowledge. I'm also not a mechanic. I've got some base knowledge. But what I am is a very scientifically minded person. And as a very scientifically minded person, I can tell you that when it's failing at the same place every time, you got to look at well, what's the most common cause of those failures? And, and main bearings, the most common cause of those failures is oil starvation, and the debris would say, well, the debris should go anywhere and create that problem. But the oil starvation in the main bearing seems to me uh, that, again, that 
that there's something going on. Like I said, most of the things I've read for people who had failures, who have documented them, they weren't doing anything challenging, they weren't under load, um, they were cruising along, and all of a sudden, bam, it's gone. I did read where some of them said, hey, they just put their foot on the accelerator, which again comes back to, is there some pre-ignition failure going on with this as well? And maybe it's this combination of things that's hitting it, but it's this main bearing and it's been a problem and it's going to continue to be a problem. So Toyota's fix, well, we don't know. Is the recall mean they're going to rebuild engines? That seems to be logistically very, very difficult for 100,000 truck engines currently. Um, there's, you you know another hundred plus thousand out there from uh, the from you know the second quarter of 23 to today and they're still making these vehicles and they're still putting that same engine in them and we've seen failures in the 2023s and the 2024s another thing that comes in interesting here is that they're not recalling the hybrid vehicle and with not recalling the hybrid vehicle even though we've seen uh, uh, failures in that yet that may be that they don't anticipate the same failure rate there may be something uh, subtly different in that engine it may be you know just kind of spitballing here that perhaps the um, the torque the low end torque created by that hybrid engine um, what I'm thinking is maybe that's enough that it doesn't cause the same amount of deformation that the gas engine is getting and so we're not seeing it as frequently in the hybrid vehicles but thus far there's been no recall on the sequoia that uses the same engine and, and no recall on the hybrids or no recall on the 23s or the 24s but now the new question what do you do if you own one of these vehicles right well i think you know i've been pretty clear in my videos over time about this you get rid of that turd get rid of it right now go get yourself a gen 2 something between 2007 and 2021 you're going to be much happier with it ultimately i love my truck i you know i had a 2018 i documented i sold that the uh, only reason i sold it is still in the family my daughter got it right she purchased it from me um otherwise i'd had that truck till it quit which who knows when that would have been so went to a 2020 love the 2020 so as much as I go, setup um, i'm gonna have to do something about the trans cooler that's become obvious i took it on one pretty trip good without and even. It. i probably won't do a second trip without it second big trip without it um but that's probably going to happen this summer um, and i'll go ahead and document that when it does can't happen right now because somebody rear-ended that truck and it's being fixed and that's really got me bummed out now the uh and the other thing I will tell you is, so if I can't get rid of it, right, there are going to be people in that financial situation where they can't get rid of it and they have to take this truck. What am I going to do? I'm going to change my oil. I'm going to change it from 020 to 530, and I'm going to go to premium gasoline, right? These are going to be the things that help me mitigate that response, that, that um, uh, it, because if there is some sort of component similar to the pre-ignition failure in this, and I, it seems like there is when it's happening, but it's hard to say, I think these are the things that are going to protect you the best. As a matter of fact, I have a feeling, you know, so like I said, I don't think Toyota can replace all those engines. They get in, you know, because they use the word safety with this, they've gotten themselves to a weird place. Um, maybe they are going to replace all these engines over time. I don't know, but the logistics of changing out all those engines in all these shops across America just sounds just totally unrealistic to me. Um, I think more likely what's going to happen is they're going to bring the vehicle in. There's going to be an inspection of the vehicle. Um, they're going to drain the oil. They're going to do an inspection of the oil. If the oil is free of any sort of mechanical debris, then they're going to say, okay, yours is functioning fine. Go ahead and keep it. And here's your extended warranty. That's what I think the fix is going to be. If they do find debris, I think you're going to be put in line for the engine replacement. And, and with that extended warranty, whatever they take that engine warranty out to, I think that's when you're going to um, see those happen. The problem is going to be with these things is going forward on resale. I mean, these things, they're going to be looked at as dogs. There are people, who, you know, there's going to be plenty of information out there now on the Internet. This is not up to the typical Toyota, Toyota quality that we're used to seeing. And so, again, if it were me... I would dump this thing as quickly as I could. Um, but those are my thoughts on it. Um, and, you know, please, others out there, this is how we learn information. Share your thoughts. Tell us what's going on here if you have a good idea of it. Um, this affects so many people, and Toyota has, you know, this really loyal 
customer fan base and and you know the fanboys that are out there anyway who all told me I was crazy and you know all the things they put out about oh this is a proven engine because it was used in the LS 500 give me a break right it wasn't a truck and it didn't do that well in that vehicle either um, for the you know they sold like a total of like 20,000 of them before they put this thing out into their uh, uh, full-size pickup truck it's been this vehicle has been a catastrophe from the get-go if you have one that's doing great for you so many people comment I wish you well with it I hope it continues to do great for you but it's like playing Russian roulette with this vehicle at this point in time is my feeling I just wouldn't do it I'm not a big fan of Russian roulette and so I would just go ahead and, and dump that vehicle and get myself something that's going to work but again let me know what your thoughts are